What's up? What's up? What's up? It's Sunday morning. We're here at Dynasty Life Miami podcast. It's your boy B, as always, joined by the big dog JP. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Ready to talk some football. Eating myself a cookie for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Time. That's the breakfast yeah. of champions right there, we, bro. Yeah, we don't got time. We got time for football. We don't got time for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're we're coming through with a with a Sunday morning episode. Probably you'll probably be hearing this all. Maybe it drops, you know, Monday. I know JP works on it behind the scenes. Uh, we were we, we took a little hiatus. Uh, we reorganized the show a little bit. We talked about it. We decided I don't I don't think we were given much value with the the weekly breakdowns of what's happening in the games. You know, you can you can pick up any article and you can read about it. You can check the box scores and see it. And you know, while week to week helps in dynasty dynasty is a long-term game it's a it's a you know it's all about the long-term value so we did a little reorganization i think everyone's gonna like it in this in this episode we are going to talk about each of us five guys that we're a little higher on now since the season started you know we got four we got we're, we're four games in that's about a quarter of the season we got some we got five other guys that we're a little bit lower on and we're just going to talk it out with each other see uh see where each other's heads are at what we're thinking and we think this is going to give you everybody a little bit more actionable intel, a little bit more information that they can use to make moves. And we're going to have some additional episodes coming up. I think next week, we are still got some things in the work, but I think next week we're going to do a little bit of uh, contender, pretender type of type of show. Uh, what you should do if you're competing, what you should be doing if, you, if, you're, if you're not competing and you're close to a rebuild. We're going to throw some ideas out there. So next week's going to be a great show. But uh, I think this show is going to be super interesting, ready to jump into it. But before we do that, it's all about the socials. JP, why don't you tell them where they can find you, where they can find us? What's up with that? Find me at Salazar305 on Twitter, and you can find us on Dynasty Life MIA, and you can find Brandon at Uncommon Sense. Spell it out for them, Brandon. Let them know how it goes. It's U-N-C-O-M-M-A-N-S-E-N-S-C, Uncommon Sense. Because common sense is not common anymore, bro. And that goes all the way to football, though. So we are here. We're gonna go into the five guys that we're more we may we may be higher on or we're more excited about since the season started. We each got a list. We haven't had a chance to see the list, so we may have some repeaters. Uh, we may have some stuff we're gonna talk about. But let's jump right into it, man. JP, I'm gonna let you go first. What's the first guy on your list that you you're excited to talk about today? Well. The first time, the first guy on my list, I would have to say is Jamar Chase, man. Uh, I was really down on him in the preseason. I wasn't liking what I was seeing for him. I was saying that he was going to be a work in progress, and he has completely turned it around in the, se- in the season. He scored in every game except, I think, the last game. He's Burrow's finding him in the end zone, and it's not small passes, not mid passes. He's throwing bombs to this kid. It's his rookie year. He, I think he scored in the first three games of his of his career and uh, sky's the limit for this kid. I really like what I'm seeing from him. So you can see it does matter, man. You know, chemistry between a quarterback and a wide receiver, even from college, it's looking like a good pick. Yeah, they should have gone so well, but it's looking like they made the right choice because that chemistry that they have is, is uncanny, man. It looks really, really good, man. It looked great in college, but it looks even better in the pros. Yeah, it is, bro. And I think this goes to show, right? We're all guilty of it. We got to, we, you know, we got to take, we got to take these lessons where we find them. We got to try not to overreact sometimes, right? I mean, we, 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 we're, we're getting so much information through the off season. We're reading camp reports and we see some drops and we can't just blow it up to like, this guy's never going to catch the ball. We, we, you know, we should have trusted the process. And I agree, man. I think, you know, I was a little down on him too, kind of making fun of like, you know, it doesn't have stripes on it and, and the ball's smaller. And the fact is, he's a baller. You know, we should have known he was a baller. And you know, I'm gonna take that back to the lab for me for next year and try, for at least for me, not to get too worked up about off-season reports when it comes to that kind of stuff. But well, yeah, well, you got you got to understand, you know, to, to in your defense, we did have a pretty lousy preseason. I think if we would have had a regular preseason, like you know, years in the years past, we would have seen a little bit better showing from Chase. It was just at this preseason, all the teams were all over the place. Some teams were starting their starters. Some other teams weren't even starting their starters. They weren't even putting them in the game. It was just one big mess. So it's kind of hard for you to speculate on the future. 
when you you know the preseason is not even cor- going correctly. It's not going as as advertised as in the past years where they put their players to play and they put the rookies to to play. So let's see what they got in their rookies. That wasn't the case this year. There was a lot of teams that wasn't start that weren't that weren't starting their starters. So in your defense, yeah, I, I would say that you know. Not pay attention to to the offseason reports, but if we would have had a better uh, preseason, we would have maybe had better had a better you know hold and grasp on what was going to go down in the actual season. Yeah, you're right. And also remember, Burrow was coming off an injury, right? So Burrow wasn't a hundred percent, so they couldn't use him as much, so they couldn't practice as much. We talked about it. Jamar Chase took a year off from football. Maybe the rust the rust is a real thing. So uh, you know, again, Jamar Chase. He's looking like the real deal, and I'm and I'm in agreement 100%, bro. So, uh, my guy, the first guy I want to talk about for me, I want to talk about Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones right now, he's currently the number six QB in fantasy football. He's his team is one and three, but it's not because of Daniel Jones, man. He's been playing really good. He's got that rushing floor. Uh, while Barkley was out, he was leading the team in rushing. Sterling Shepard, when he's not injured, playing well. Barkley doing a little bit better too. He's starting to come back from the from the injury. Kenny Galladay showed up yesterday. I mean last week. So Daniel Jones is a um, he's not that I don't think he's gonna stay QB six all year. But I, he might not even be a top twelve QB six a top twelve QB all year. But he's definitely a good starter to have in Superflex. And that was not the case when we went into the season. A lot of people. We're not counting on him as a possible starting option or as a strong starting option. And I think everybody's down on the Giants. No one's really high on him. So to me, he's still very attainable in, in, in trade. Usually super flex QBs are going to cost you an arm and a leg. But this guy is the type of player that you can get cheaper. He's not going to be cheap, but he's going to be cheaper than other quarterbacks that may be higher than him. For, for example, for example, Baker, people value Baker Mayfield over Daniel Jones. I think that's, the, you know, Baker was a number one pick. Right now, I would trade I would trade Baker for Daniel Jones plus something on top of that. And I think that's a deal you can get done. People still hold Baker in a higher regard. And I don't think he's a bad player, but, but he doesn't have the offensive weapons around him. And that team likes to run the ball and play defense. He's not going to have a lot of volume. And Daniel Jones is playing from behind. He likes to run the ball himself. So, you know, if you can trade a mid to late 2022 first, uh, which seems to be a downer type of class, um, and you can get a player like Daniel Jones in your super flex lead and slide him in as your number two QB or even a high end number three for your team, that's a move I would make if I'm a contender. I would definitely do that move. I don't know what's going on with Baker Mayfield this year. Even though you you know you're absolutely right about him not having the weapons, but he's missed a lot of wide open throws this year. He's actually missed Odell Beckham on a couple of them, like wide open, like catch the ball and it's end zone. For that reason and for the other reason that you stated, they are a running team, so I would do that. As to Daniel Jones, I love what I'm seeing from him. Finally, you're seeing. I mean, I mean, just the yards of. Just our yardage that he's ripping off in chunks when he runs the ball is fantastic. I love the intelligence that I'm seeing from this kid. That was his his uh that was his main thing when he was coming out of college. He was the most intelligent QB out of his class, and now you're starting to see this. And he's on a bad team. He's still very, very young. And the good thing about Daniel is he's using everybody on the offense. He's even using Kadarius Tony. So he's spreading the ball everywhere. Even Saquon looked good last week. He was running the ball very, very the hardest I've seen him run. So there is hope for fantasy relevance and dynasty relevance on the Giants, which I said I, w- I was trying to stay away from them. If Daniel Jones is going to quarterback like that, they're, they're going to be very viable. And it's good, they're going to be a very, very good choice to put on your starting lineup. Yeah. And if you recall, I said, I said, when we had one of our shows, I said, could he make... Could he be the quarterback? Could he be this year's Josh Allen? Remember, I said, could he be the guy? Now, he's not going to make as big of a jump, but make that jump from that lower level where everybody was kind of making fun of having them on his team, having them on their team to all of a sudden a strong, starting, viable option, bro. And we're four games in. We don't want to make too much of assumptions, but people forget it's a 17-game season, man. Four games, that means we're 25% of the season done. We need to, you need to start making assumptions because the season's already a quarter of the way over. So I'm excited for what I'm seeing. And again, 
I think he's still attainable. So, you know, that's, those are moves I'm trying to make myself. It takes, it's, it, it's a little risky, right? Cause he could turn back into a pumpkin. Um, you know, Cinderella season's over. He turns back into a pumpkin. He's useless, but sometimes you got to roll the dice. I'm feeling confident enough to roll the dice on a piece like Daniel Jones. No, I, I, I absolutely like Daniel Jones. I I'm actually happy that I didn't trade him because I've had, I've picked him, you know, in in a bunch of super flex leagues and he hasn't just, he hasn't been producing for the past couple of years. So I was just like, damn, cause I know the kid has potential, you know, but it's finally good to see him with his potential rising in the NFL. Not only that, he's on a bad team. So I can imagine if that team happens to turn it around, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be like a friend. He's a smart quarterback, man. He's a, he's a very, very intelligent quarterback. You know what he's I'm saying? Sneaky athletic. Sneaky, yeah. Very sneaky oh, yeah. athleticism. And, I mean, just just the way he runs and when he runs, he yeah. knows when to run and he rips. No, he ran. He's ran it in for a touchdown. I, I don't even know. I think it was fifty yard run or over a fifty yard run into the end zone. Uh, it's crazy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He's not the fastest. Doesn't have the best arm, but he's very intelligent and he's accurate. Yeah. So and he, and he spreads the ball around. There's no excuse there that he can't get it to somebody on the team because there's no there's no gelling. No, no, no. He's getting it to everybody. Shepard got. Uh, Galloway, everybody, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ga- Galladay, not, not Galloway. I'm sorry. Galladay. And even Kadarius Tony, like I said, he's getting the ball to everybody. That's what you want in your franchise quarterback. So hopefully they'll get their coaching woes straightened out and maybe we can see the Giants start winning again. Yep. I agree, man. All right. Take us to number two on your list, man. All right. Number two on my list is going to be Austin Eckler, man. Yeah. I love Austin Eckler. Tell me yeah. about him. What's up? Everybody was knocking this guy. Oh, he's not He's not with Philip Dumpoff Rivers. And you said it, Brandon. He was on pace for about 90-some catches before he went down last year. And Herbert likes him. I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing him produce, but with a better quarterback. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't mean to, like, to, to knock Philip Rivers, but, you know, Herbert has a stronger arm. They say because he likes to pass the ball and he has a stronger arm that Eckler was going to get cut out of the offense. That's not the case. He's using Eckler. The, the way he's supposed to use Eckler, and he's Eckler shining. But he's, everybody was was already down on Eckler. Everybody was trying to get rid of Eckler in the offseason. And to be honest with you, now everybody's back on the horse again because they, they, he's, he's using them. He's dumping the ball off to him, but it's like they're, they're set plays. They're not, he's, not, he's not trying to go to Eckler to escape the rush. They're set plays for, for Eckler. So this is really, really good news for, for everybody that has Eckler for now and the future because, I mean, Herbert is a great quarterback. They have a great team. Their defense is looking up. You want a player like this on a good team? It's just all about his health. If he can stay healthy, he's bro. He's gonna he's gonna go off. Definitely. And I'm glad you brought him up, man. Um, I didn't put him on my list, but I'm, he's right now. He's currently the number two running back. Okay, he's the number two running back, both in total points and points per game. Okay, mm-hmm. he is right behind Derrick Henry. His last three games: twenty-two points, twenty-two points. 29 points, okay? Yep. The, the only thing that can stop this guy is health. That's it. The mm-hmm. only thing, he's basically, a, he's a he's, he's a Christian McCaffrey-level player right now, the way they're using him. He's running, I mean, think about it. He's catching the ball just as much as Christian McCaffrey. They use him running. Larry Roundtree is not taking much work from him. Justin Jackson is not taking much work from him. So, and he's on a better offense. I mean, Justin Herbert is better than whoever they got uh, than Sam Darnold, okay? So better offense, better defense, better team overall, super high on Austin Eckler. Only thing that can stop him is injuries. So that's a great, great guy to bring up. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That we're, at the end of the day, the show is to bring light to pieces and players that can win you a championship, whether you have them on your squad already or whether you need to go and acquire them. So next guy, man, I'm gonna, let's keep it moving. I'm going to move it up. I'm moving up to Javante Williams, man. Oof. That's what I want to talk about. This is a guy I was already high on going into the season. And a lot of people will look at the box scores, casual players. They're going to see he hasn't blown up. He hasn't had his big game. He, you know, he's not scoring you a bunch of points, right? So people are going to be asking, why are you high on him? And that's why I'm high on him. He hasn't had a breakout year yet, or he hasn't had a breakout game yet this year. So he is still, for people who are casual players, people who are maybe – who drafted him and thinking that he was going to help take them to the next level. Maybe they're getting a little impatient. Okay. So this is a guy that is a trade candidate for me right now. 
All right. He he's he's a rookie and he's still he's sharing snaps 50-50 with Melvin Gordon, who, let's be honest, he's been playing good. Melvin Gordon has been playing good, but he's still taking 50 50 percent of the work. Okay. Melvin Gordon has a long history problem. It's a long season. Okay. So Javante could still end up blowing up this year. But even if he doesn't, Melvin Gordon is gone after this year. It's going to be Javante's backfield. This is the time to buy him right now. To be honest, I would trade Nick Chubb for Javante plus something. I would also trade Mixon straight up. If I could get that deal done, I would get rid of Mixon for Javante. I'm that high on him, and I'm that low on those two individuals. But those two both have name value that you could possibly get. You could possibly get that deal done. So Javante Williams... Trade candidate for me. I'm super high on him, and I think the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, I wish I just wish that team would actually go get a quarterback. But yeah, I like the way he looks. And like you said, Melvin Gordon's out of here after this year, so the sky's the limit for him. He's already looking good. He's running the ball good, even with the fifty-fifty share. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have the TDs like Gordon, but he's not looking bad in that offense. And eventually, you know, if he's already looking good his rookie year, then next year that means he's going to look even better. So, all right, all right, let's go. I, let's get it. Right. Well, let me let me ask you what what were your thoughts on Chubb for Javante, Joe Mixon, or Joe, Chubb for Javante plus something, Joe Mixon for Javante? Are those deals that you could work with? Is there something you would add on to that? To be honest with you, I like that a lot, Brandon. I like that a lot. Uh, not that I'm off the Mixon train, but the injury proneness and everything right there is already you know it's it's already something that I don't want to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So, and who else did you say you were going to trade him for? I said I would trade. Ch- I would. I would trub. I, I would. Oh, if I Chubb, could get the deal, Chubb for yeah. Javante plus something else. I would definitely do that if I could. I would definitely do it for either or. Stated obvious. The obvious reason for one and for Chubb, I would say because the, Hunt's just taking so much work away from Chubb. It's ridiculous. Like it's it's. I mean, Hunt. They're just giving the the, the second. It, it seems to like. It seems to me that the second half is Hunt's half, and the first half is Chubb's half. Not that they're completely taking away the ball from Chubb in the second half, but it look that's what it looks like. It looks sure. like they're switching. It looks like they're switching places. So, in saying that, Melvin Gordon's out after this year. I would definitely do that. You're gonna get some, you know, points from this guy, and then just be on the lookout for his handcuff. For Javante Williams' handcuff, whether it be a brand new rookie, whether it be somebody that they bring in, whether it be somebody that they already have there, just in case. And it'll be cheap. It's not going to cost you much. All right. All right, let's move on. What's what's uh, number three on your list, man? Number three on my list. I would have to go. I would, I would have to go with Kyle Pitts, bro. I'm going to go with Kyle Pitts. Because I'm not really, like, the hype that he had and him going, like, in the top four in rookie drafts and super flex and all that. I mean, we're going to see how much he scores today because he's in London. And they don't have they don't have a couple of receivers that I think Gage is out. So, that it's it's pretty much, I think it's pretty much, I don't even think Ridley's playing. Is Ridley playing? I, I, I might, he might, he might be playing. I don't think he's made the trip. No, I don't think he's playing. So, no, I don't think Ridley's really out. Come yeah, I don't think up. yeah, I don't think Ridley's even playing. So in saying that, today we're gonna see how what, what Kyle Pitts is because my Ryan doesn't have anybody else to throw the ball to. But I'm not down on him. I'm just saying he was massively overhyped. I was thinking he was massively overhyped. He's not better than Kelsey at this point. He's not better than Darren Waller at this point. Could it be that Matt Ryan sucks? Yeah, but where he was being drafted in rookie drafts, it would you know. I would be super disappointed picking this guy up in the top four. Super, you know, uh-huh. with all the with, with what he's done so far. He's not terrible. You know, it is his first year, but, you know, the hype behind this kid was like he was going to be like Kelsey or like Waller or Kittle. All right. All right. I hear you, man. He, I think he scored already today. I think he's going to do well. I, he's getting the targets and he's getting the work. The, the Falcons are just big mess. I think the biggest problem is I think I think – he would have maybe even reached the ceiling, a part of the ceiling people were talking about. I think the big thing is Cordell Patterson. I think no one saw that coming. Cordell Patterson has affected has affected Ridley, and it's also affected Kyle Pitts. So no one that he's taken work from both guys. He's 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 working in that part of the field. Both those guys like to operate. He's getting end zone targets. So 
I mean, I think that no one could really see that coming. This guy's been on multiple teams. He's been, he was been on the Falcons last year, and he wasn't getting this type of work. So I think that's just one of those things that you we can't we can't plan for. No one knew Cordella Patterson was going to be a thing this year. I didn't know. So I think that's really going to be that's really affecting Kyle Pitts this year, and for a second and, and another level, it's affecting Ridley for sure. I think Kyle Pitts could reach his ceiling if he gets another quarterback. That's right. where I'm at. <laughs> All right. That's it. Well, let's go. I'm moving on to my next guy. For me, the, one of the guys I'm higher on this now is is Dawson Knox, man. Um, I talked. You know, I talked about him. I was I was in I was in on Dawson Knox. He's currently tied at number six. All right. Let's let's go through this team. This is a high powered offense. It's got Josh Allen killing it at quarterback. All right. Let's look at their weapons. Beasley. He's losing targets. He's older. Sanders, Emmanuel Sanders, looking very good. But again, an older player that they got off free agency. So by next year, this team could be a trio of Josh Allen, Diggs, and Knox. Okay? You know, they don't run the ball that much. They're a, they're a passing team. Maybe Sanders stays. Maybe it's Beasley. Maybe it's both. But obviously, Knox is younger. He's an athletic tight end. And I think, I think, this, I think he is going to be year over year getting better. I talked about him this earlier this year on our podcast. How I was higher on him, how I liked what I was seeing, and it's coming to fruition. Tight end six now. He could be in a top five tight end. For me, I would trade a second for him in a tight end premium league right now before he even blows up because he hasn't had a blow up game. He's getting consistent targets, but he's not getting a lot of targets. But again, he's getting end zone, red zone looks. He's athletic. His quarterback is young and really, really good. So this is the type of player that you go and trade for. In non tight end league, premium leagues, this is the type of guy that you get a throw in as part of your deal. You're making a deal on a bigger piece, all right? And you're like, hey, you know what? Why don't you just throw me tie, uh, Dawson Knox and we'll call it a deal. And people are not even thinking. It's a one tight end league. They're not even thinking. You throw that guy in there and he's tight end six already. He could, like, again, he could be up there. And he could really be separating himself from six to seven, six to eight. He could become a, you know, make them a make it a top six type of uh, premium uh, position as opposed to a top three or top four. So I'm really liking Dawson Knox. Man, on a high-powered offense like that, passing offense, he's looking good, bro. And Jay, and let me tell you something. Allen loves him. Like they're boys. So yeah. he's gonna be he's gonna be looking for him. So that's a that's a great connection. Good shit, good shit. All right, so we're we're almost through the guys that we're high on. Uh give me uh, give me your next one. All right. I'm going to have to go with Debo Samuel. Love what I'm seeing from Debo Samuel. He's been healthy this year. He's been able to stay on the field. And he's doing it, man. He's getting that yak. He's, he's doing everything he was supposed to do the, the, the past couple of years. And the only thing that can stop this guy is injury, in my yep. opinion. He's, yep. he's, he's all that in a bag of chips. You know, I'm just sorry that it took so long for it to happen. But when you have injuries, things take time to heal. But he looks really good. He, I think he's going to look really good with whatever quarterback they have under center. Because he's a yak receiver. All you have to do is get him the ball. Let him do the rest. So he's Garoppolo's perfect receiver. And I think he's going to be a good receiver for Trey Lance too. Because Trey Lance, is, you know, he's going to get him the ball. And we're and, and we're gonna see that today because he's gonna have Trey Lance is gonna stretch. We're gonna see how good he does with Trey Lance under center. Yeah, and I can't I can't wait to see that game. Uh, I'm super pumped. I'm starting Trey Lance everywhere. I'm oh, starting. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting Trey Lance everywhere I can. And let's be honest, Trey Lance played uh, half the game. All right, and Debo had a monster game. He got now there was a broken coverage play where where Lance found him. But the key is Lance found him. Lance is looking for him. All right. Yeah. And on top of that. Kittle, who I'm going to talk about in our in our next section, Kittle's out. He's on IR, all right? So that's going to even be condensing the targets more, and it's going to be going to Debo, and it's going to be going to Brandon Ayuk, who's been in the doghouse, but hopefully Kittle's out. That's going to, you know, that's going to increase his target share. But regardless, Debo's going to be the guy, and people, you know, he run, when he gets the ball in his hands, he runs like he's a running back, okay? Like you said, he's a yak monster. He, he's, a, he's a beast, he's a dog, and he's like Austin Eckler. The only thing that can stop him, like you said, is injuries. Yeah. So, yes, yes, and yes, Debo, he's the man. And I, and let me tell you, just a side note, bro, I saw some nasty juke from Trey Lance, bro. I saw some elusiveness from Trey Lance that, I, that it actually wowed me, bro. I was like, holy shit, this guy's fast, and he, bro, he's, he's like... <clears throat> Bro, it's like Lamar Jackson type shit, bro. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. 
He's it's like, like, bro, he's his his juke, bro. Like just the way he broke to the left and he broke to the right, his shake and bake. I was like, holy shit. This yeah, guy's nasty, bro. The, the so only thing, like, yeah. The only thing with Trey Lance is is that he's playing super fast right now. You can tell he's kind of running all over the place. His ball's got so much zip. Sometimes you got to take a little bit off the ball. And he's running a little kind of like he's chicken with his head cut off. He's look, you know, yeah. and, and, and and he's playing, he's faster than everybody. So it's working out for him. But if he can slow it down just a little, he can slow the game down in his head a little. Watch out, man. Watch yeah. out. He's because a little erratic. Think, yeah, he's a little erratic, but he's a little erratic. erratic. I'll tell yeah. you, I'll tell you the difference between good erratic and bad erratic. Good erratic, Trey Lance. Uh bad erratic, uh tour. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like when you see Tua in the pocket, he gets erratic. He's not smooth. He's like, no, Tua is nervous. Tua yeah, is nervous erratic. Yeah, it's like nervous erratic. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This guy's like, yo, I'm, I'm out. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like yeah. it's two differences, but it's just two, two. So you, so people, so our listeners can be like, all right, and differentiate between differences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm gonna move on to my next guy. Uh, my next guy, I'm gonna talk about Kadarius Tony. Man, I know you touched on him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everybody shit all over this guy. Okay. And, and I think I think that we shit all over him because we don't that we think the Giants are idiots and they picked him in the first round. I don't think when I'm gonna talk about him right now, I don't think he should have been a first round pick. Don't get me wrong. Exactly. But I but I, I think he's proven that he's an NFL talent with skills. Okay. And I think everybody's down on him because of where he got picked. But the fact is it's not his fault that they decided to pick him in the first round. Now, if they would have grabbed this guy in the second, third round, everybody would be super excited. Look at this talent. Look at the speed. Look at the skills. But because he got picked in the first round, we're all down on him. He's never going to be the alpha type of player. He's not going to be that guy demanding 15, 17 targets a game like a Devontae Adams. He's not going to be a 50-50 play, ball player like a, like a Kenny Galladay or a Cortland Sutton going up and taking the ball. But what we're seeing from this player is he has – juke ability he's got playmaking ability what he is to me he's a curtis samuel type of player and we all know that if curtis samuel could stay healthy uh, and be consistent with targets he's the type of player that we're going to want on our team so if Kadarius tony can be curtis samuel without the injuries that's a player that you want on your team that's a wide receiver three that you want on your team who can give you wide receiver one spike weeks right and the key of the beauty about Kadarius Tony is nobody likes him. Okay. He's super affordable still. Most people who drafted him didn't even want him on their team in the first place. He was going late second round in super flex drafts. Late second round. Okay. So he's the type of player that you can kick the kick the tar, kick the wheels on somebody. You know, he had a decent game last week. He might have a good one this week. He might have a dud. To me, it won't matter. I'm still going to go out and I'm going to try to trade for him. I'm willing to trade away maybe, uh, you know, seconds are somewhat valuable. They're 50-50 they're picks anyways. You never know who you're going to get. I think Kadarius Tony. and if we like Daniel Jones, if we like Daniel Jones and we're liking his tools, then by definition, I think some of that bleeds over to Kadarius Tony. As somebody I may want to put on my team. Yeah. Hey, everybody was super down on him. And he seems to be like like a good player. He seems to be like he knows what he's doing. He's a, He knows where he has to be. Like, he's not like, you know, and it's true what you said. It's not his fault that the Giants picked him up where they picked him up at. He is a talent, and he's showing that he belongs in the NFL, and that's all that matters. Yep. All right. We're almost done. Just give me your last guy that you're higher on. Man, uh, I'm super high on Daryl Henderson, bro. Daryl Henderson has grabbed the bulls by the horns over there, and he's got, if I'm not mistaken, already almost every game he's gone over 20 points that he's that he's played in. I love the way he's looking in that offense. He's looking a lot more patient. He's brought in behind the blocks. He's all-purpose back. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next year if Cam Akers comes back. Uh, he's, he's looking really good in that offense, bro. I like what I like what I'm seeing from Daryl Henderson. I really do, man. And I and I wasn't and I wasn't high at all. I was talking about we were talking about trade this guy, trade this guy, trade this guy, and he seems to be like comfortable in that offense and playing within himself. He's not even trying like to do too much or anything. And I I, I like what I'm seeing from him. If you have him on your team and you didn't trade him, kudos to you because you got a guy that's definitely an all-purpose back. That team's winning games and he's looking good. I like the way he's looking. He is looking good, man. But, you know, 
let's be honest. What what is happening is that he's he's injury prone. All right. I mean, he's injured, right? He missed a game already this year. He left half the game that was that they played on Thursday night. That he had to leave the game. He still had a good score, sixteen point ninety PPR fantasy points, right? But he opened the door for Sony Michelle to come in to get a touchdown. And I think what we're seeing is what the what the Rams saw is probably a good player who can't handle the full workload, right? They want to give it to him because you see him play and he and he's he's explosive with the ball. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. He's currently the running back nine on the season while missing a game. So let me say that again. He's the ninth running back on the season while missing a game. Okay. But he's having he's having trouble staying healthy. And I think that's a concern. I, I'm not worried about Cam Akers. I'm hoping Cam Akers can come back. But Again, Marlon Mack, same injury. Marlon Mack has done nothing, nothing. They tried to put him out there. He's got no burst, no juice. And I don't know if Cam Akers, without Achilles injury, is ever going to come back to the player that we thought he was. So Daryl Henderson is probably going to be the 1A over there with the Rams. But are they going to keep Sony? Are they going to bring someone else to help share the workload? Probably. So we may never get the full Darrell Henderson type of experience but he's playing really well and again if if his if his ceiling is running back eight running back nine or even a top 10 running back you can't complain you can't complain you just got to be you got to have be ready you got to have his backup because he's going to miss games oh yeah absolutely. that's the key well that's that's a that's a that's where you that's like i said that's when it's good to have the backfield and it's going to be cheap because nobody's going to be taxing for Sony Michelle. So, yeah. you know, you can have either or and Sony, not, not for nothing, but Sony Michelle's looking comfortable in that offense too. That yeah. Offense too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, so, Sony Michelle's showing that maybe the Patriots overthink things too much with running backs, bro. You know, I think they overthink things. They like to use 70 different running backs. And that's the thing. They just, they just want to play, bro. They just want to play. And in New England, they're not going to play. It's going to yeah. be whatever Bill says. And, and it, it gets to the point where you just want to play ball. Yeah, and you know the years pass, you get older, and you know running backs don't have a lot. They don't have a long shelf life in the NFL, so that's even a, that's another thing. You want to play even more because you're not going to be able to play at that level for the rest of your life, especially at the running back position. So, all right, well, look, my last guy, I was saving this guy because I didn't know if you were going to talk to him, talk about him, because I know he's a guy that you've been high on and you like a lot, but you didn't talk about him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him, bro. DJ Moore, bro. Yes, DJ sir. DJ Moore, dude. He is putting it all together, bro. He's, it was all about touchdown problems before. He's getting the touch. Uh, Sam Darnold loves throwing him the ball. I mean, this is he's the reason Sam Darnold's numbers are looking like they are. Obviously, besides rushing touchdowns on Sam Darnold, but he's looking for and he's throwing the ball to DJ Moore, and DJ Moore's delivering, all right? This is the type of player. He's young as fuck. This is the type of player that you buy high on. OK, we always talk about buy high, uh, buy low, sell high. Sometimes, sometimes you have to buy high. If a player is good enough and young enough and it may seem high now, but he could be even higher. To me, that's the definition of DJ Moore right now. He's that type of player right now that if I'm a contender, I'm giving up two first round picks for DJ Moore and I'm super happy and fine doing it him and cmc that's who this offense runs through that's who they like to throw the ball to it's not it's not robbie anderson it's not going to be terrace marshall even if terrace marshall takes a step forward next year it's clear it's super clear that it's going to be dj moore in this offense for a very long time i'm i'm taking him over calvin ridley if, if you had to ask me today i'm taking him over calvin ridley i'm taking him over terry mclaurin I'm really high on DJ Moore, and again, I'll, I'd be trading away two first-round picks if, if that's what it would take to get DJ Moore, and I wouldn't have any problem with it at all. Man, I love what he's doing this year, and it, and it goes to show what a switch in position, <clears throat> switching in positions in, in, in the wide receiver where the uh, as a wide receiver goes. Last year, they had him switched up with Robbie Anderson. He had a horrible, not a horrible year, but he didn't have... You know, he, he, he didn't live up to expectations. Let's just say how it is. You know, they switch him up with Robbie Anderson. They put Robbie Anderson to now blow the top off the defense and have him play the Crowder role, like the way Crowder played in the Jets. And he's a billion times more talented than Crowder. And this is what you're seeing. And I'm super happy. I, I, I was I was super down on this guy. I, 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 and it was because of the touchdowns. He wasn't getting the touchdowns. Sometimes he was getting out produced by Samuels on the field. Like, it was just, you know, 
a lot of stuff going on there. But now I'm glad that nobody bit. I was trying to trade him for two first round picks all off season. Nobody wanted to give him to me, and I'm super happy. And I couldn't be happier that they didn't take him because now he's going to be the number one there for a very long time. And like I said, he is what Jamison Crowder was to startled in the Jets, only a thousand times more talented. Sky's the limit for this kid, and I'm happy for him. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. All right, so that's we've that's the first part of the show. We've we've touched on ten different players that we are higher on their values, what the plan is for them, what we think of the future for them. So let's move on. We're gonna move on to the next one. This is the five guys each that we're maybe lower on, um, that we have concerns about, that we don't we don't we're not we're flat out not liking all of that. Um, I'm gonna let you run with it again, bro. What's the first guy on your list that you're not that you're a little lower on or you're down on this year? Uh, George Kittle, man. You put you mentioned them. You mentioned them a little while ago. Um, this guy's the tight end two or three, if I'm not mistaken, on the Dynasty League football website. And like I said, I think Waller's better than him. I think Hawkinson's a better grab than him at this point. Like I can go on and on. I even like Fant over him. And I just I I don't like what I'm seeing. He's very injury prone, and like you said in, in previous podcasts, he's only had really one good breakout season. And I'd rather pick up Kelsey or Waller in a heartbeat. Like no 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 questions asked. Like I'd rather have him, and this is why he's in he's on IR. And where you're picking him up at on a startup draft, it's gonna hurt your team. It's gonna it's gonna hurt your team because a you're not getting the production from him, and he's not even playing. Yeah. Uh, he's he was on my list too. Shocker special, bro. He was on my list too. We talked about him numerous times, bro. I don't think there was one podcast where we said get Kittle. Kittle's a value. And there was multiple would you rather's, and the answer was never Kittle, right? Like I don't remember one answer where we said get Kittle. No. Injuries, injuries are a problem. Debo Samuel's emergence is a problem. He's no longer. We talked about it. He's no longer the number one option, right? He's not the number one option. And if you're not the number one option or even the number two option uh, as a tight end, you're going to lose value. So I've been off Kittle, even more off Kittle. For those people that do have Kittle, listen up. If you have George Kittle on your offense, this is what you need to do on your team. This is what you need to do. You need a way for him to come off IR. You need to, you need him to have a big game, and you need to sell him. And it's not just put him on the trade block. You need to aggressively try – to move this guy, and you're going to have to be willing to take a loss because if you're asking me, his value is going to go down every year. It's going to go down every year. You got to trade him now while his name still holds value. That's that's what I would do. So that's what I recommend to everybody else out there. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, no, not to Kittle. He, he's had great instances, and he's had great games and seasons and stuff, but I'm just saying where his ADP is at, <clears throat> You're already losing getting him where his ADP is at. You're losing. You're setting yourself up for failure because there's, it's, you're not going to get – it's not that you're not going to get the production. It's that he's not going to be on the field. And like you said, Brandon, he's no longer the number one option there. There was a moment in time where there was no wide receiver in San Francisco that was viable to call number one. You know what I'm saying? And he became that, which was the time to have him. But now you got to do exactly what Brandon says, wait for him to come off IR – Wait for him to have a huge game and set him right there aggressively. So you can get something for him before it's too late and you get nothing for him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My guy, bro, the guy I want to talk about, we touched on him a little bit. I'm going to talk about Nick Chubb. All right. Mm -hmm. This guy turns 26 in December of this year, bro. So he's going to be a 26 year old running back. He's currently the number 13 running back in PPR formats. So he's not killing your game. He's not killing your team, but he is a zero in the passing game. He's only had four targets this year. Four fucking targets out of, out of four games. He's being outplayed by Hunt. And to be honest, now is probably the last time you're going to be able to get full value for this guy. He's going to have some big games, but this offense has proven they don't use him in the passing game. You need to trade him away while his name value is still high. Maybe, for me, maybe you can get a guy like Antonio Gibson. Who people are who are a little bit low on and who's dealing with an injury, or maybe you can even get someone who's down on Jonathan Taylor. Okay, even if you got to trade a little something else. But for me, Nick Chubb, after this year, 
his value is only going to go down, in my opinion. So I'm trying to trade him away where people still are excited about having Nick Chubb on their team because I'm not excited about having Nick Chubb. No, I, I would, and I tried to tell you, man. You're like, oh, uh, Hunt, I don't really see the big deal about Hunt. Well, there you go, bro. Like, Hunt's taking my work away from him. It's like, like I said, it's like his, the first half is Chubb's and then they switch places. Then the second half is, is Hunt and then Chubb takes like a, the, the, second, the second hand, you know, the second hand carries it. It's like, again, where his ADP's at, you're picking this guy up as your first running back on your squad. Let's just talk startup. Whether it's or whether it's just one QB or super flex, you're picking him up. Where you're picking him up, he's your first running back, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? And you're getting he's already he's already getting carries. He's already getting work taken from him. He's a big boy. He's great. I love the way he runs, but it's just the way that the Browns are using him. You know what I'm saying? It's not kosher right now. I mean, it is kosher right now, but it's not going to be like that for a very long time. Eventually, you're not going to be able to get what you can get for him right now. And I agree with Brandon. If you can sell him, sell him right away. And like, like same same formula. Wait till he has a couple touchdown games, two touchdown game or something, or a big game, and be aggressive. And you know, and, and if you have both of them, get rid of Chubb and keep Hunt because Hunt's gonna eat, bro. He's gonna eat passes more than Chubb is. And and a PPR super flex, that's what you want in a flex position, you know. And I rather I rather get something good for Chubb that I'm gonna use on my team. And for instance, keep Hunt for a flex spot, and I'm still winning because what I'm gonna get for Chubb, if I get rid of them at the at the right time, he's gonna help out my team. Whether you have a whole wide quarterback, tight end, or wide receiver, or, or or whether you want picks for him, whatever it is you're trying to do, but the time is now. Yeah, agree, man. All right, so who's your number two? I'm gonna have to go with Mike Evans, bro. He seems to be like the one that's gonna get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, like I like we called it. You know, we try to talk about this in our first 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 podcast when we're doing the best ball thing we were doing we're not trying to go after him or godwin we're trying to go after antonio brown in the later rounds and what happens antonio brown is killing it right now uh, godwin has had his flashes but the most consistent one out of all of them is brown and the one that seems to be that seems to be left out of the whole situation is mike evans so if you can get something for him right now we're explaining to you same formula wait until he has a colossal game Maybe wait until he has two or three, but you got to be aggressive. Once you see somebody's uh, trying to hit you up about him, you need to you need to pull the trigger because, A, he's getting old. He's getting to that, that age already, which is, I think, is 28, and there's so much ball to go around there. Like, there's, there's so much ball to go around that it's, it's already it's, – it's, you're already at a lose-lose, you know, and I think that – for me, honestly, Brady's favorite receiver on Tampa Bay is Antonio Brown. Yeah, I mean, I think it's either it's either A B or it's Godwin, right? And those are the two guys he really likes. I think I think Brady likes to throw to Antonio Brown because he likes to prove that he, you know, that he was right about bringing him into to New England. He was right about bringing him over to Tampa Bay. You know, he has an ego just like you know that's what makes him great. So I think he's really out to prove that Antonio Brown's a beast. And I've never, you know, I've never been high on Mike Evans. I, you know, he's had, I think he's had consecutive, what, six or seven straight years of 1,000-yard seasons. I get it. But he's too boomer bust for me. And like you said, I think he's going to be the odd man out. He might have some big games here and there. But but they're, but they're, they're too far and few between, man. And there's, that's just not somebody I want on my team for the price that you have to pay for him. He's the one that you have to pay the most for out of all three of them. We talked about it. So okay. the most exp- – He's the most expensive guy, and he's also the the, the guy that's going to give you the most the least productive. Play. Yeah, the, the least the least productive guy. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna be the most valuable guy that's gonna give you the least amount of points. Yeah. Well, that's that's a double negative. You know, we, this is what we try to keep you away from on the Dynasty Life Miami podcast. We try to give you the gems. We try to give you those those diamonds in the dirt that haven't even came up to shine yet. So that these things don't happen to you. We were ta- we were talking about this with our best bought strategies. Don't pick up Mike Evans in the in the first or second round. Pick uh, Antonio Brown in the thirteenth, and the value that you're gonna get there is so is so supersedes the value that you're getting in the second first. Or, yeah, in the second round with Evans, that it's ridiculous. So yeah, I would definitely be trying to get rid of Evans. I'm sure he's gonna have his big games. He is a red zone target. I know that Brady's gonna look for him in the red zone coming from, you know, the 20, 15, 10 yard line, he's going to be looking for him for the fade or, or for the jump ball. But that's not going to happen every game. So if you can be patient, 
wait for him to have a couple games and get something for him, some viable pieces, whether it's a pick, a young stud, something, and be ready to take the loss because he's not going to get that production this year, you know, unless you trade him away during the season. If you wait till after the season is done, you're going to lose a big, big, big amount of value off of him. So I suggest you do it now. And who's your guy? Who's your next guy, Brandon? Uh, my next guy, bro, is, is Dalvin Cook, man. Dalvin Cook, he's currently the running back 30. He's out again this week. He's 26 years old, and he's going to be 27 before the start of next year. Um, he's another guy that is – this is probably the last time you're going to be able to get full value for him based on name recognition. We talked about it earlier in the podcast. Our, our, our you know, The first couple podcasts we did, I was talking about move this guy while you can. If you're not competing, this is the guy you want to boo. And and right now, you know, I don't think his value is going to get any higher. In fact, it's going it, it, to most people. It's got to be going down. You know, it's got to be going down. So, for me, you probably can get a guy like Gibson, or maybe like a, a J a Gibson plus something, or JT plus something from a team that is competing. He's probably going to bounce. He's probably going to have a little bit of a bounce back this year. He could still end up top five or at least top ten for sure. But injuries and issues are piling up, and I'm and I'm gonna try to get out on him this year ASAP. Yeah, uh, that that would be. He's reaching that that age cliff. When he's reaching that age cliff as a running back, if you can get the house for him, get it because he's he's obviously wearing down already. Like Brandon said, he's out again today. Kudos to everybody out there that has Madison as his handcuff, like me and Bree probably do, because I have him. I have Madison pretty much everywhere where I have uh cook so yeah man that's why sometimes it's important to have cuff people madison is gonna ball when cook is not there he's a bowling ball out of idaho like come on bro like these are the things that win you championships and these are not even players that people talk about every day these are the things these are the things that you need to be doing in the preseason like i said if it's if the handcuff is cheap go after the handcuff because you never know when that running back's gonna go down and if that backup running back is good and he's playing a bad defense sky's the limit for you man you're getting another win in the books so that's how you got to do it so yeah if you could get madison as your as as a cuff these are the type of things that win championships for you he's not a big name for instance, Brandon just mentioned Dalvin Cook is out again. These are the type of players and moves that you can make early in the offseason. If you have a handcuff that's cheap, relatively cheap, go get him because these are the things that, that win you games towards the beginning, middle, and end of the season. And you, the wins are always good. You never know when you're going to need wins because you need to get to the playoffs because that's when everything starts all over again. So, yeah, that's enough about, about uh, Dalvin Cook. All right, bro. So uh, who's, your, who's the next one on your list? Well, the next one on my list, the next player that I'm going to talk about is, believe it or not, one of your favorites is Keenan Allen. I think, um, you know, he still has mad, uh, mad value left. He's production-wise, he's still producing, but I think, uh, I think Mike Williams is going to end up becoming the guy there. And while he's still producing, he's not ha- he hasn't had any bad games or anything like that. He's actually still producing. I think it's time to, to move on from him and get – the most that you can, because I think that his value is just going to go down from this, from this year on out, especially the way that Mike Williams is balling with uh, Herbert. I think it's time for him, you know, for people to move on from him. And I think you can still get something really, really good for him. Yeah. I mean, I I might disagree right there. I mean, so if you're thinking that, are you assuming then that they bring back, they're going to sign Mike Williams to a big contract? Not that they're gonna sign Mike Williams to a big contract because they're Cause he's they're a free already agent. Said, yeah they're they're gonna they they already said they're not gonna resign him. Okay, you know what I'm saying? They already said they're not gonna resign him. But I'm just saying, if you can get, you're not gonna be able to get the most for him that you're gonna be able to get. Like next year, you're not gonna be able to get what you can get for him right now. I just don't think that you're gonna be able to get what you can get for him right now next year. Why? Because he's already reaching that age cliff. He's probably gonna get he's probably going to have one or two years left of great volume. But then after that, he's old already. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you keep him, then you're going to have to ride with him to the wheels fall off. Cause you're not going to be able to get what you're going to get for him right now. Next year. I, I don't, I don't think you are, especially if Mike Williams keeps having the year he's having. And by any chance, if Keen Manning goes down and he misses three or four games, there, there's, his value starts tumbling again. And then you're just losing value. So in my opinion, if you're not contending, these are these are this is this is for if you're not contending and you have Keenan Allen, I think you and you can get 
something good for Keenan Allen, I do it now. Oh, I agree. If you're not contending, but if do you, if you are contending, you keeping them on your no, team, you, right? You, you, you have to. You have to okay. keep them. Okay. You have to sure. keep them because right. because you have to keep them a because two reasons. He's gonna get volume, and a once Mike Williams leaves from there, he's gonna go back. He's gonna go back to being the number one guy there. It's just how long can he keep that production up? Because remember, you got Josh Palmer there. I'm not saying Josh Palmer is better than him, but they're going to bring in some guys. And, you know, it's, it gets to the point where, you know, you already get hit that age cliff. And, you know, like I said, if you're not contending and you're looking for a player to trade and you don't know who it is, I know it's going to hurt you to trade Keenan Allen, but it's time. Well, I agree, to- yeah. I mean, any team I wasn't even – I wasn't contending last year, I've traded away Keenan Allen. So, I'm in agreement there. If you're not contending, there's no reason to have a 29-year-old wide receiver on your team. You know, all he's doing is giving you points and ruining your draft your draft, your draft no, level, you, right? You got, you got players out there. You know, you got dynasty owners out there that they fall in love with players. I'm one of those guys. There's players that I fall in love with that I don't like to trade. But in my opinion, everybody in my team is viable for the yeah. right price. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what Dynasty's savage. about. Yeah, Come from all. I'll trade any. I'll trade anybody for the right price, bro. You hey. sell, We hustlers. You sell me. I'm selling anything, bro. You like that? How much you gonna give me for it? Okay. Hey, that's what Dynasty football's all about. You know, right. it's not. It's not to fall in love with players. It's just about business and making moves, baby. All right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. I agree that if you're not a contender, definitely you want to trade away Keenan Allen. And to be honest, I would even go the opposite. If I am a contender, I might even be trying to buy Keenan at the right price. Cause if you can find a rebuilding team out there and you can, you can add Keenan to your team as the wide receiver three or as a wide receiver two, or even as a flex uh, for the right price, that's going to put you over the top as a contending team. So definitely, I think he's right at that weird age at 29 and he's on such a good offense that it really all depends on your team makeup. Are you a contender or not? And then you make the move based on that for sure. Yeah, man. And, 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 and let me tell you, Right now, if he has an injury, will be the time. It's like the opposite. Now, if you see that he goes down and it's like a couple games things and you're contending and you can get him for cheap because somebody's low on him, like, oh, you can, you know, somebody sends you a deal for him, grab him. Because at the end of the day, when he comes back, that's he's like, he's a viable number one slash number two receiver. So if you can get him, if somebody's selling him for cheap, you never know. Or you can get him for cheap or you might be able to add, add something on whatever get him because he's going to score you points and he's going to get the volume he's get, he's going to get the ball all right man i agree i agree with you all right let's move it on we're almost done two more players to go uh my next guy i'm going to talk about somebody that may be surprising bro aj brown okay Ooh. um now this is not me hitting a panic meter this is not me telling you sell 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 because if you don't sell it's a disaster what what i'm trying to say is we got to take i'm concerned all right this guy had knee surgery on both knees in the off season. He comes back. Now he injures his hamstring, which we know if you're coming back from knee injuries, you could injure your hamstring, but this is a string of rate of constant injuries. He was playing a little off as it was. He was having, he was having drop problems, which can be, which can be definitely can be fixed. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off today. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, he's playing Jacksonville. Derek Henry's going to have a day. They're going to do some play action. You know, AB is the only guy there. Julio's down. So th- he could have a great big game. He's super young. So, I, But I'm not going to be mad at somebody if they decide to cash out. Now, again, this is not sell, you know, sell for anything or sell for 60 cents on a dollar. This is pure maximum profit. If you if you are a little concerned about his injury history, he's only he's so young and he's already had two knee surgeries. I mean, that has to raise some red flags. You have to be concerned. You could love the guy as a player. You could think he's a great talent. But for me, two knee surgeries before you're 24 years old, that has to be a bit of a concern. Now, he may never have a knee problem again. We all know Frank Gore. Remember, he had those two ACL surgeries back in the day, and everybody thought he was done for, and he ended up having a long-ass career. So that could still happen. But I wouldn't be mad at somebody if they say, you know what, I don't want to deal with, with those injury problems. I don't want to deal with the risk. You know, maybe I can get a CD plus, or maybe I can get a Jamar chase plus. I wouldn't hate it, bro. I really wouldn't hate it. And it helped if you're a little worried and you're minimizing your risk, I wouldn't be mad at you if you made a move like that. To be honest with you, 
I wouldn't be mad at you either. I, I don't like what I'm seeing from the Titans in the passing game at all whatsoever. And it, it's it's funny that you bring up A.J. Brown because Ryan Tannehill is going to be my next guy. And it's going to be my next guy that I'm going to talk about. But, but yeah, um, I think it's time to get rid of A.J. I think this is a clear-cut running team. I think that Tannehill's just going to manage games by the by the way that he's passing the ball. And he's just it's, – it's all Derrick Henry. It's all Derrick Henry. And they're they're gonna pass that, that the ball's gonna go through their penny. That's it. That's all you need to know. And like I said, for where AJ Brown is going ADP wise, uh, I think it's time to get rid of him. I, I I was super high on this team. I thought this team was gonna explode this year with the passing offense because of of, of Henry and the play action. And I just I just saw a whole different dynamic for this team. And this team is just a running team. And Tiger Hill's gonna pass the ball when he has to. That's it. That's all there is to it, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm really disappointed. Uh, uh, Ferksker, you were completely right about him. He hasn't done anything. I thought he was going to be a major red zone target, but it's just – it's the, the boss going through Derrick Henry, and there's nothing else to say about that. It's time to get – I would move him right now. If he has a big game today, move him tomorrow. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Again, I agree. I mean, I just – I'm a little concerned with him. So, all right. So, you said – are you, you – you want to move into some more with Ryan Tannehill, or are you good on yeah. him right there? No, no. Uh, t- um, I'm gonna talk about Tannehill. Okay. I thought I thought that he was gonna be passing the ball, airing it out. I thought he was gonna be making Julio Jones super fantasy relevant, but it, it happens to be that AJ Brown and Julio Jones haven't been on the field, so it's been all Derrick Henry, and I don't think that's gonna change. I don't think that's gonna change. I think it's gonna keep going through Derrick Henry. I think yeah, uh, AJ Brown and Julio Jones are gonna have their games. But it's not gonna be like a you know a shootout passing all of, all attack offense like I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be more of a balanced offense. You know, obviously they've always used Henry to run the ball, but I thought they were gonna use Henry as a decoy a little more, like in the passing game for the play action fake. I thought they would uh they they are passing it to him a little bit more, which is good to see that. But I just don't see Tannehill doing and and giving getting that volume that I thought he was gonna get to give them uh, the amount of points that everyone's expecting from them. Expecting, especially where they're picked up in the draft, in the startup draft. I don't. Uh, I'm. I'm. I, and as far as Tannehill, if you can get anything, if you can get a first rounder for him, with if in a super flex, I do it to pick up another quarterback next year in the first round because from what I hear, from what I'm seeing, I have him in a bunch of league and he's been doing diddly squat and it's you know it's not maybe it's not him. It's just they want to run the ball. They know what they got in Derrick Henry and they know what they. Their formula is to win, and, and that's it. They're just a running team, kind of like the Browns. Yeah, and I mean, and, it, and it's the same thing. Like you know, the Browns have Landry and they have Odell Beckham. Well, these people have Brown and they have Julio Jones. So it's it's a good it's a good comparison. So that, that's a, that's as, that's as much as I can say about that. Yeah, I, you know, I can I can see that point. I mean, again, I am the one saying you know I'm a, I'm concerned with AJ Brown. I'm a little more concerned because of injury risk versus playing wise. I'm I, I can see where you're coming from, and I'm gonna be honest. I'm 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 still high on Tannehill. I have him in a couple of leagues. I wouldn't trade him for a first, man. I I mean I I wouldn't. No, no, a first a, a first end, a first end. Yeah, like not just a first, a first end because he's yeah. still he's still valuable. But if you're gonna get rid of him for just a first, it's not gonna it's not you know. But you need to get a first and a player for him or you know something. But I just don't. I, I thought he was gonna be airing it out a lot more, and it, it's just you know. Vrabel wants to run the ball. And not only that, they've been injured. A.J. Brown's been injured most of the time this year. And so has Julio Jones. I don't know if Julio Jones is even playing today. So he's, it's not, just, he's not playing today. Yeah, so it's 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 it, 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 a, a lot could take into effect of why Tannehill's playing the way he's playing. But I, I just the first couple of games, what I saw in that team, maybe it's just the team, the offensive. I don't know what it is, but they don't look like they did last year. Yeah. And our, my own... My only hope is that you know we all know it's off a lot of it's offensive line. They've had guys going down. People haven't been able to stay healthy. They they should be getting someone back. I think one of their right tackles should be coming back next week, not this week. So I think they're gonna ride Derrick Henry for a while. Uh, he's a he's a force to reckon with. I'm not giving up yet on 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 Tano. I still think he's gonna have a really good game. He's shown us too much for too long. But definitely the panic meter for me, the the, the concern is there. So I, you know, if you if you're even if you're right there with JP and your concern level is even a little higher than mine, and you want to get something for him, then definitely a first plus a player, especially a quarterback. 
I never like to try to – if I'm trading away a quarterback in Superflex, I always want to try to get a quarterback back, a lesser quarterback, if that's what it takes, even a high-end backup type of quarterback. You know, I, you know, you, like you said, you get a Marcus Mariota back. You get a – back in the day, you could have got a Tyler – could have got a first-round pick plus Tyler Heineke, plus something, right? These players that are one hit away, who are good quarterbacks in their own right that could blow up, definitely, or even a lower level. You could have got a Sam Darnold when he's with the Jets. You could have got a Teddy Bridgewater back. So definitely in Superflex, what I always say is, if you're trading away a quarterback, you always want to get whatever you want to get, plus a quarterback back. You want to do a downgrade plus a pick, because... People for, don't realize just how valuable super quarterbacks are in Superflex. No, absolutely. And especially in, in those Superflex leagues where the quarterback scores six points per touchdown and not four. Pay attention because yeah. you might be in one of those leagues and you might be valuing the QB throwing four-point TDs instead of six. And that changes the whole game and the whole dynamic of the situation, guys. Points and matter. Formats matter. The way that everything happens, you know, you got to be paying attention because sometimes you miss these things and you may be missing out. You definitely. And just to piggyback that, that's when in those type of leagues, in those four-point touchdown leagues throwing, that's when the running quarterbacks take even more value because while mm -hmm. they're while throwing is four points, rushing it in is six points, bro. So you, that's when the running quarterbacks take on even more value in those type of leagues. So be, we got to be aware of that. All right, let's move on. Uh, my my guy Kittle, I already talked about him, bro. So why don't you give up your last guy? My last guy's gonna be Miles Sanders, bro. Um, there's no excuse. I love the what I saw from him the first game. They were doing this like little option, like read option thing, and he went he, off of that. He was running really good, but man, it looks like he's he's on the way down, and Gain was on the way in. And I, like I said, if you can get something from Miles Sanders now, I do it in a heartbeat because it looks like Gainwell is going to be taking a lot of passes and it looks like Gainwell is going to be the back. Even if he still ends up being the number one, like Hurts is looking for Gainwell. And uh, he might, I'm not saying he's as fast as, uh, what was the little, that little, the little running back they used to have, bro, Sproles. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a Sproles, but he's going to play that role. And we and let's remember what Sproles, how many how many points and how fantasy relevant Sproles was. So you might want to keep an eye on that. If you have the backfield, bro, it's total crownage. I love that if, if all you guys have that backfield because if anything happens to Sanders, that guy's next up to hit. And if he if he gets the full workload, I just don't think he has the size and the durability to take a whole uh workload from first down to the third down. But uh but yeah, I think he I think eventually Game will start taking a lot of work from him. He's already doing it and he's getting the passes. And I just don't like what I'm seeing from Sanders. I think he's a little bit inconsistent. He looks good, he has some good instances, and then he just doesn't look good in some other games. So that's one of the that's my last player right there. Yeah, I mean I've never I've never been much of a Miles Sanders guy. And I think we're seeing it here. He's not getting any work. You know, he's not getting the. He, he, there was a game where he got two touches, where he got two rushes, and he got like four four total touches in the whole game. I think it was against the Cowboys. You know, Gainwell's looking faster. He's looking. He's got more juice. And Sanders, man, I, he's, I think he's an okay player. I think he's a good player. But they're not using him. You know, and if you're not going to get volume, if you're not going to get volume in an offense you know, as a running back, and you're not going to get the passing down work. You're 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 not gonna be viable for fantasy. You're not gonna be an RB one. You're definitely you're definitely not gonna be an RB two. You're just you're just not gonna be worth putting in your lineup, and it's gonna kill you every year. So every game. So I, I'm out. I've been out, and I agree, man. I don't know what you can even get for him right now. I mean, I, I, I it's gonna be hard to even get rid of him. So it's one of those. Be aggressive, man. You gotta be aggressive. The problem is when you have these type of players, and you tell me if I'm wrong. You have these type of players, these Miles Sanders guys. And they're killing your team. But you got them in the first place because you were high on them. You like them. And then they have a good game. And that's really a good opportunity to sell. But then what happens? They have a good game and you're like, this is it. This, the, the guy who I've drafted, the guy who I like, he's back. I'm excited. I don't want to trade him now. He's finally going to score me points. And then guess what happens? The next week he goes back to not scoring you points. And you're like, fuck, I should have traded him. Right? It takes some balls, bro. It takes some fucking intestinal fortitude to risk the chance that maybe you were wrong and that this is the start of, of something big. You got to remember why you wanted to sell them in the first place. And you got to really use these opportunities, these big games. And you got to roll the dice and say, look, 
This is why I wanted to get rid of him. I wanted a big game so I could get something for him. He's been sitting on my bench or he's been killing me when I put him in my lineup. Stop playing that game with your stop self. Stop stop killing yourself by, by putting him in and out of your lineup, missing the big games, killing you when he's in your lineup with the low games. Get him off your get him off your roster. Get someone that has more upside and more stability so you're not dealing with that headache, right? Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that, man. Like don't don't like, hope can be a very, very dangerous thing for dynasty managers. Yeah. Very dangerous thing. And this is exactly what, what Brandon's saying right now, you know? So, yeah, there yeah. you have it, folks. All right, bro. Another another episode in the books, bro. I like this format. Uh, uh, we're going to be coming next week with something a little different. Uh, you know, it's going to be that week five in the books, and we're going to talk a little bit about contending and rebuilding. That's going to be a super fun show. That's something that I really enjoy about Dynasty. One of my favorite parts, I think yours too, is looking at a team, either breaking it down and getting picks and young players or going all in and selling the farm and trying to go for that championship run. That's what gets the blood going. And I think that's going to be one of a really good show. So I tell everybody, if you're not subscribed, subscribe now because we're starting to get into some really fun content. And I think you all are going to enjoy the type of energy that we'll be bringing. The next show we're going to be recording on a Saturday. So it'll probably be dropping Sunday, Monday at the latest uh, of next week. So jump aboard. If you're not subscribers, now's the time because we're about to get into some thick, the thick of shit right now. Yeah. And uh, we're also going to have a little bit of, of, of strategies for you guys that like to take over orphans out there which is fun for me. I, that's very fun for me to take over teams. Uh, we're going to have strategies for that too. So just be on the lookout. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, you hit like, and you follow us on our social media. All right, bro. Wait, have a good Sunday, bro. Enjoy the games. Goodbye, everybody. Much love, man. Enjoy the games, brother. Love, man. God bless.